So welcome. And in this little clip, I want to, to show you how easy it is to have GitHub do security analysis on your code. And I want to start showing you the result. In this simple uh, repository where I am playing with some .NET Core crypto API, I have my security tab, and in my security tab, I have another section dedicated to code scanning alerts, and in which I got some previously scanning code alert that are telling me that I have some sort of problem, security problem in my code. And how difficult is having GitHub on giving me this suggestion? Actually, it is really simple because you can simply create a special workflow called, in my situation, code QL analysis, and it's auto-generated by a wizard, and the name suggests to you that this is the action that performs code QL analysis. And code QL is the instrument that is going to analyze your code and find security problem. The action is some sort of predefined one. So the only thing you can change is the branch you want to monitor. So in this simple example, I just want this analysis, code QL analysis, to be triggered only on master and develop branches. And for pull request, I'm enabling this um, action only when you issue a pull request on develop. And I have also a schedule as an example. But the action is really simple. It's run on an Ubuntu machine and it's actually auto-generated by a wizard. The only important thing I've changed is the language. I'm instructing the, the component that I'm using a C-sharp project so it can more easily understand what's going on and what kind of code the tool is expecting to analyze. And then it is a really simple action where you have a standard checkout of the code and a special section that is initializing code QL using a language so it is it, it is installing, configuring, initializing, telling the environment that I'm using um, metrics language at C sharp in my situation. And then I have a special step called auto build because CodeQL is capable of analyzing code, but you need to build the code if you are using a compiled languages like C sharp or Java or a C. Auto building is not useful if you are writing um, JavaScript or a Python code. So with this simple action steps, auto build, what happened is the action is trying to compile whatever uh, is in the repository. So in my situation, since it is um, C sharp uh, project, it is expecting to find some CS project or dot SLN file in my repository and that you have some sort of of helping comment and if the auto build fails because maybe your solution is needs some sort of prerequisite to build you can simply remove the auto build and put here the code that is going to compile your solution and finally you have after you compile your code you have the step that is actually performing the real code QL analysis, and it is also a predefined step taken by the code QL action. Okay, once this action runs, you can find it in the actions tab that it is actually run on my code, and this is the code QL, and if I look at the output of the action, I have one job completed, and you have the analyze C sharp and you can see that it actually really um, perform an auto build and it's tried to attempting to automatically build C sharp code. So it is running some sort of command, it is installed .NET Core and it's try to running .NET clean and it actually it, it is actually finding my solution file. So I know it is going to work. So the auto build for this simple project is enough to have code QL run. The final part is when the code QL scanning run, if it finds some sort of vulnerability, it 
put you a security alert in code scanning alert section. As an example, I have an encryption using ECB. So the CodeQL analysis find that in a piece of my code, I'm using the electronic codebook encryption mode. And we know that this is vulnerable. But in this situation, it is actually in some unit test code. So it's not a real vulnerability. It's a code that is running on test. And that's important because the old security tab, the old code scanning alerts can be dismissed with a reason, such as, as an example, you can see the history. I can't forget, close this as used in test and reopen and close. So you can close, reopen an issue. And when you close, you can give a reason such as used in test. So I know that this is a vulnerability, but it's used in unit test. It's unit test code. So I can assure you that it's not a real vulnerability. But this kind of analysis is somewhat simple. So you're expecting um, the code scanning to look at your data, find some sort of constant, like so decipher mode ACB, and automatically flag as critical. But let's see some other um, more interesting um, more interesting issue, like our coded credential. So in this alert, the system is telling me, hey, I found some more coded credential, but how it can find this piece of code and telling me that this is indeed an R coded password? Yes, the good part of the code QL analysis is it actually follows the flow of code. So it is telling me, hey, the R coded value and other password flows in the code to the password parameter in object creation of type RFC 2898 bytes. So yes, it's interesting. If I click here, it tells it tells me, okay, you are in this piece of code, it's a unit test. You are passing this kind of R coded string in a function. And then this R coded string flows between function call, method call, function call, method call, and until it end in this kind of file, in this file, encryption utils, and it is used for in a constructor with this specific class, with a constructor of this specific class, and so the CodeQL really knows that this is going to be used as a password. So it's a vulnerability because it's an R-coded password. If I'm not sure if the tool follows all the flow of the code correctly, you can also show the paths. So it is going to show you all the steps it followed in your code, such as function, method after method, function after function, method after method. You hand after a lot of calls to this kind of final file, final encryption utils file where he found the use as a password. So it is a little bit more complex analysis than simply looking at the code, but it is it is following the code. It is following all the path of your code, trying to understand if there is some path with problems. And one is when it finds a part of the problem, it gives you the alert. And as the previous alert, I dismissed this alert as used in test. Another interesting aspect is the detection. So the code analysis is telling me that the first time it saw this vulnerability was this comment. And so you can really understand the who and when this vulnerability was introduced. And then it is telling you that it's going to flow in various branches. So it is appearing in this commit and then it appeared in a branch called develop and then it appeared in the branch master. So we can look at the flow of this vulnerability between maybe the feature where it was introduced, when it was closed and merged into develop and when finally it is confluent, it, 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 it went on master. So it is really useful because you can really flow the lifetime, the life cycle of this vulnerability in your code. And you should, in a situation like this, you should put some sort of um, good practice like 
uh, pull request in place to avoid vulnerability to flow from the feature to the develop and on the master branch. And finally, you can have a set of predefined label put on this um, this issue. And it's particularly interesting, the CWE code of this vulnerability, because if you are not sure on why this is a vulnerability in this situation is really it's really simple. You have our code of the password, but there can be situation where you don't understand why the code is really um, is really vulnerable. So you can simply search for I don't know seven nine eight. So you search CVE seven nine eight, and you are redirected to um, the Mitra site, and then you have a good explanation on why this is a vulnerability and you have all sort of information and you can simply came from the code you find here. And clicking on a label will filter all the, the scanning alerts based on this kind of label. So in this situation, you can find that you have five in related to the CWE321. So you can even try to understand how much common is a particular vulnerability in your code. And maybe if you find that there are certain area of your code that are more suggest it's more affected by a specific vulnerability. You probably need to modify your process and to make um, probably mandatory training to your developers for avoiding this kind of vulnerability to flow into production code. And that's all. As you can see, it's really easy in GitHub to create an action. It is automatically created for you. It can auto build the code for you. And this gives you automatically a sort of a, a, a series of code scanning alerts so it immediately point the finger to some point on your code that need review goodbye